All right, everyone. Good evening. We would like to welcome you to our Team Tuesdays webinar series. My name is Kristen Lenig, and I am the Central Field Director for Special Olympics Pennsylvania. I will be your host this evening during our webinar. My teammate, Haley Fusak, who is our SOPA Marketing and PR Manager, is going to be operating the presentation. I would also like to introduce our athlete co MC for this webinar, Aaron Keller, who is a global messenger from Luzerne County and has been a SOPA athlete since he was eight years old. His favorite sport is long distance running, and he participates in basketball, bocce, swimming, and athletics. Aaron's favorite Special Olympics memory is when he got to go to World Games at Abu Dhabi in 2019, where he ran the 10K, the 1500 meter, and the 4 by 100 meter relay. Outside of Special Olympics, Aaron is a volunteer coach for the traditional and unified track teams at Crestwood High School, which is where he went to high school and also competed with the track team. He also recently got a job as a paraeducator at Fairview Elementary School. Aaron recently received the Profile of Courage Award, which was given to him by the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame. Please welcome Aaron. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to serve as the co MC for tonight's final Team Tuesdays webinar. I would like to remind everyone that throughout this webinar, your microphones will be muted and your vi video cameras will be disabled. That's right. You can still submit any questions you have or comments in our chat box, but at the end of the presentation, we will have a designated time for question and answer. These specific questions for our presenters should be submitted through the Q&A box for the presenter to view. This webinar will be recorded and posted to our SOPA YouTube channel, where you can view later and share with others. As you all know, the purpose of this webinar series is to connect with all of you and share educator and motivator content to continue our mission. Thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. Let's kick off this webinar by hearing from Matt Aaron, the president and CEO of Special Mix Pennsylvania. Thanks, Aaron, and, and thank you and Kristen for uh, co-presenting tonight. Uh, I want to start by thanking Kristen and Haley. Uh, many of you, you all know Kristen now after moderating so many of these. Uh, many of you probably don't know Haley. Um, Haley, I don't know if you can turn your camera on so that the folks can see you, but a huge thank you to, there she is. A huge thank you to Haley and Kristen. Uh, you've done an amazing job first coming up with the idea for Team Tuesday and then putting it together. Uh, changing it a couple of times uh, to make it better, uh, coming up with creative presenters. You guys are really uh, the rock stars that have made this happen. So thank you for putting it together. Uh, and as I look around at the audience tonight, I see a lot of familiar names in the participants, the, the attendee list. So I wanna thank all of you as well for being part of this. You know, this was one of the creative ideas that the team came up with uh, more than a year ago as a way to try to keep us all connected during COVID. And one of the words that I've heard over and over and over again through the pandemic is the word pivot. You know, so many organizations, companies have had to pivot. Well, the, the best description that I've heard of uh, pivot came from Julie Hershey, who's the head of community relations for the Eagles who said, you know, if you really think about what pivot means, when you pivot in a sports context, context, what you really do is you hold one of your feet still and you rotate your body around that foot. And so if you pivot multiple times, what do you do? You just spin in a circle. And so rather than thinking about pivoting over the last year, I like to, to use the word innovate. And our team has innovated, not just once, but I would say at least three different times through this pandemic. You know, the first time we innovated was right after the shutdown first happened and we were all trying to figure out um, how, how to move forward in this totally new environment. And since then, we've gone through multiple rounds of uh, reinventing ourselves and our activities 
trying to look for, for meaningful ways to stay uh, connected uh, with all of you. And, and this has been one of them. So again, thank you to everybody who's been, been part of this. The team asked me to, to share my favorite memory from Team Tuesdays. And I can't really think of a particular topic or session that stands out. What stands out to me is really what has been common through all of these. And, and that's all of you, the volunteers and especially the athletes who have not only participated in these, but you're really what has brought these to life. There have been so many great discussions and, and activities um, through these various sessions where all of you have actively participated and that's made all the difference. And so that's my favorite memory of Team Tuesdays is just staying connected and seeing uh, so many athletes, so many volunteers and, and seeing you connect with each other through all of this. So um, it's a little bittersweet to see Team Tuesdays coming to an end, but like so many other things, it's not goodbye, it's not the end. It's really, we're gonna innovate once again and looking ahead, we have some exciting things planned for the fall. So uh, with that, let me pass it back now to Kristen and Aaron uh, to lead us through the rest of tonight. But uh, thank you all. Uh, this has been a great, uh, a great ride for the last year. And I'm excited about what the fall holds as we, we look ahead to some new things. Thank you, Matt. Um, it's truly been a, an amazing ride with all of us here and Team Tuesdays, the Team Tuesdays crew. And uh, it's hard when looking back, it's hard to remember even all the stuff that, that we've gone through in the past year and a half. So we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Uh, when we first began this webinar, it was last April, April of 2020. And it was a way for us to share and connect during the pandemic. Since then, we have shared uh, best practices, um, heard from amazing expert speakers and highlighted the tremendous work of our athletes and volunteers. And while we know this past year and a half has been difficult, there were still many bright spots and things to celebrate. In honor of all our perseverance and determinations, we have made a video which takes a look back at when the pandemic began, where we are today and all the memories in between. The Special Olympics Indoor Winter Games scheduled to start tomorrow in York are canceled. The latest casualty of coronavirus. Officials say it's just too risky for the thousands expected to attend. Huge Sarah disappointment Gideos for the athletes in Special Olympics. Their Indoor COVID. Winter Games Sarah. scheduled for this weekend in York have been completely canceled. Joyce Jones tells us it's a huge disappointment for the athletes who were hoping to Volunteers with the Butler County Special Olympics say more than 40 athletes and their on the I am excited to announce that this is our first ever Commit to Fit video. So starting today, Special Books Pennsylvania is going to be putting out new videos every day to challenge you and your friends and family to stay active. First and foremost, it's attitude, okay? So something, it's the overarching theme of our program and it's all over the walls in the Bryce Jordan Center and our locker rooms. And as you, I don't know if we can see it, but part of our uniform is every one of our players, our staff members, um, every single day, and there's no excuses. We have to wear this band. This is the only uniform we have. Uh, it's called, and it's an attitude band. And what is attitude to us? And it's every day you have a choice when you wake up in the morning. You could think negatively or you think positively. Nobody likes to be around people who are negative. And it's so easy to be negative because there's so many things during the day that are going to happen to each one of us that are out of our control. But how do you respond to that? Um, we choose positivity every day and, and it has never been more necessary um, than this particular time. Um, we choose energy uh, constantly. Uh, and as a result, um, we're more prepared for uh, an event like this. And 
It's about being resilient. And some of the strategies that we've used with our guys um, are, you know, we have what's called a routine of greatness. We do it throughout the year. Each one of our guys has to put together his daily routine. It's called their routine of greatness. It includes um, breakfast, it includes lifting and stretching. It includes um, obviously class. It includes study hall hours. It includes meals along with practice and workouts and all of the things that come into their daily lives. And each one of them has a, a, a Sunday through Monday, what we call routine of greatness. Uh, and it has been extremely apparent to preach continuing your routine of greatness, even though you're not um, on campus. We uh, we check in with our guys three days, three times a week. We have Zoom calls, obviously, which is uh, which is easier for us because we have the resources to do so. But um, so we stay connected uh, through Zoom calls, and we continue to preach a routine of greatness. Try to get up at the same time every morning. Try to have breakfast try to schedule a workout, try to schedule some sort, you still have academics, so you still need to adhere to, um, you know, the class requirements. So you can continue, uh, although it might change times and where you are specifically, but you need to continue on your routine of greatness. And our guys have bought into that. And not only have our guys done it, our staff has done it. We do it here in my own family right now. We start school every day at 9.30. It's our home school every day at 9.30. There's no questions asked. Um, and we give a 15-minute recess break in between, and we try to finish between 12.30 and 1, the end of the school day. And it's been extremely beneficial to continue that routine um, and have some sense of structure and normality. So those are some of the things I would certainly suggest um, continuing to do, not only suggesting for your athletes, but also obviously um, yourselves um, and extremely important. Uh, so I uh, am aware of a research article that actually showed the most important component is whether or not the athlete thinks that the coach actually believes in them. And so if the athlete thinks like, oh, my coach doesn't really believe in me, that's, that's, a, that's a problematic dynamic and you're not gonna get the best performance out of that athlete. But if the athlete conversely says, wow, my coach really believes in me. He thinks I'm really good. I'm talented. He thinks I could win this race. That is the biggest variable. And so from, it's all about from the athlete's perspective. So the coach, now let's look at this from the coach's angle. The coach may say, no, I, I think that the athlete knows I believe in them. Mm, that's, that's not, that's not going to work. And so uh, as my friend Jojo's mom said, you got to know that you know that you know. And so, you know, you want that coach to know that they know that they know that that athlete thinks they believe in them, right? And so that's really where we want to increase confidence um, that depth of experience, that belief of knowing that the athlete believes, the coach believes in them. We are pleased to present you with the 2020 Chief Family Award of Excellence. wasn't much sport and I grew up in city of New York I remember going past the Y and stopping after getting our hair done on Saturday we get it fixed up you know pressed and everything or straightened for Sunday church and I remember stopping at the Y and plant my face against the window saying one day I'm going to swim in that Y and my sister would say come on Retta you're never going to swim in that Y color kids don't swim in the rock that Y well, I proved her wrong because of Special Olympics, I had that opportunity to swim in that Y. And that brought, brought joy. Just to defy, to see that I was going to be determined that I was going to swim in that Y. Sport didn't come easy to me. And I heard the ladies speak in front of, ahead of me, um, 
They probably remember the days where girls were only allowed to only play half court basketball because it would hurt the girls. But being African American or being a black girl, it didn't bother me. But yes, did I have some hurdles? I heard my mom tell her story. I said, did you ever do sports? And she was good at sports. She says, oh no, that wasn't a thing. I would ask her, how was school for you? And she would tell me that school was not pleasant because she went to a segregated school. So she knew what separation and segregation was. She knew she was gonna have a challenge with her Loretta, even though she had six other living children and two had passed. So she really had nine children. She knew she was gonna have a challenge, but she didn't let that stop her. And when I first got into running, she was against me running. She didn't want me to run. I would go run, my role, what rule was, to run around the projects and you did not go out the parkway projects. Well, I would extend that run and I would extend it a couple streets over and somebody would come, I saw Loretta on Front Street. I said, but Front Street is the projects. And I was determined that I was gonna run. Did I have marathons in my mind at that time? No, I was just fighting to be able to do something that I could do because a lot of kids I could not play with because of intellectual disability. I wasn't smart enough. Everything was about the book. And to me, all I wanted to do was be a part of the group. I started, I didn't have, uh, we didn't have any of those role models. And I think now it is so important for, for women or for young little girls to now be able to watch, watch any type of sport on, on TV. And they now see, they see women as officials in the NBA. They see women coaches in the NBA. They see now uh, women are in the front office. We had a we had Sarah Thomas. She just refereed the Super Bowl, which was amazing. Mm. So you know, just to, to have that opportunity as a young girl, um, you now I don't and it doesn't matter what sport you watch, you always have a woman that's a commentator. You know, and before and I remember when I first started uh, in the NBA, my first probably five or six years, there was only one female commentator and that was Cheryl Miller and she was she was commentating on TNT and now you look at it doesn't matter what network it doesn't matter what sport there is always a woman's presence and I think that just tells the story I think that tells the story of how we've grown I think Jamie has said it I think Brandy has said it and it just you know it's just time and and I think for all of us each one of us have been examples um, and we persevered and, and we've, we've done it in so many different ways, which is, which is phenomenal because it shows little girls that we're not like in a little box. You're able to do whatever you want and it doesn't matter what sport, it doesn't matter what career, it doesn't matter. But it's important for us and we're, we've always been and we will continue to be those examples for those young girls that are watching that now they can see that they will have opportunities. And if, if you want to do it, now we didn't say it was going to be easy. You have to work for it and you have to persevere and you have to be good at whatever you're trying to do. But at least now for, for all the young girls, they will have an opportunity. And I think that's, that's the amazing thing of what all of us have done. This year's Philadelphia Insurance Valor Award. Yeah. Sure, I would be a positive influence on them. Uh, 
a lot of encouragement and, and uh, lead by example, you know, doing the proper warm ups and the activations and, and be willing to share your programs. Like, hey, here's my email team. And if you guys want, if you don't have something to follow on your own, I'd be happy to share you what, what I'm going to do. You know, be that really team leader. It's going to take everybody in and be the glue in the off season. There is light at the end of the summer. Wow, that was certainly a crazy journey that we got to share with everybody. And it was so great to see all the reflections on everything we've accomplished and all the memories we have from Team Tuesdays and beyond. Aaron, I know one of the highlights of virtual programming for you during the past year and a half was participating in the fitness heptathlon and being a part of the workout warriors. Can you share what it was like to be a part of that team and working out with people from all over the state? Yes, um, it was great. I got to meet new people. Um, my favorite memory was when I got to race you so for those that weren't part of the workout warriors and part of those practices we'll have to give a little background knowledge one of our warm-up routines was supposed to be what was it running in place yeah. jog jogging running in place and what did we turn that into a racing in place <laughs> racing in place is right and you know it was you and me competing and then the whole group jumped on board and every time we were warming up it was a race it became a race didn't it Yep. And I'm sure nobody thought, you know, originally you would be racing uh, on Zoom in your in your <laughs> bedroom, living room, kitchen, wherever you're at. But we <laughs> we created virtual races, didn't we? Oh, yes, we did. Did you, Aaron, did you have any uh, special uh, memory of, of any type of workout we used to do together? Did you have a favorite uh, like fitness heptathlon event that we did? I think my favorite was the um, the dice. The, oh, the dice game we played? Yeah. And the, and we also had the um, the deck of sweat as well. And the kickboxing. So ro rolling, yeah, kickboxing, which you got to join as well, right? Only once, so. though. <laughs> <laughs> our, our group really loved the power punches, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but we loved the racing in place, and I love jump, jumping rope, too. Did you have any <laughs> other exercises you liked? Squats. Squats is um, a good one. Jumping jacks. Jumping jacks. And I lane think. Lane slides. La oh, the lane slides. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I ran into my wall a couple times doing those inside. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, being a part of the Workout Warriors, I, I was with you guys in the very beginning as, a, as an honorary member, but then I became an official member the second time we did it, the second time we did the Fitness Heptathlon. And you and I ended up being on a unified team, right? Yes. And I, I'm uh, proud to say it was my first ever unified experience. I've never been a, a unified partner, and I got to do it through Zoom with you and a couple others from all over the state, which was really cool. Yes. And do you want to tell everyone what uh, award we got? We got silver. Silver medal. So what does that mean for next time? It means we got to go for gold. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. So if, they, if we bring that back again, we're going to have to race in place and keep each other training, right? Yeah, but I believe I believe what you told me was next time we're gonna race in person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to organize that soon, right? Yes. So one of my highlights, Maybe Aaron, halfway. Was, you meet you halfway. <laughs> That's true. You're on one side of the state right now, and I'm on the other. So I'll meet you halfway, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
one of my highlights, Aaron, uh, was obviously being on your team and being with the, with the workout warriors, right? <laughs> yes. And having the opportunity to work out with everyone and participate in the fitness heptathlon, it was something that I know you and I both looked forward to in our weeks, meeting together with the group. And it was great to learn more about people, meet new faces, but also learn more about them. We got to meet each other's family members and if someone had a pet or something in their house we just knew about. And uh, we really got to know each other and know about where everyone works and what they like to do in their spare time, right? Yes. So it became a, a whole group of friends. And I think that that's really important, but it was important to get together and keep moving during the pandemic and keep active and keep up with our fitness. Fitness is so important. It's such an important part of not only being an athlete, but also being a healthy person, which is why SOPA decided to lean into that aspect of our mission and launch the new fitness program, Athlete Performance Training. I would now like to welcome Chelsea Hamill, the Vice President of Mission Integration to discuss athlete performance training. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Kristen. Can you hear me okay? You're good. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me this evening. I am, um, yep, Chris and or Haley, if you don't mind just presenting, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you about athlete performance training. Athlete performance training is going to need to be implemented for a minimum of eight weeks by our coaches. So it's going to happen at the playing field. If you have participated with us for quite some time, you may recall a program called FIT5. How that program was offered previously is very similar, um, yet different. And again, I'll talk how it's different momentarily to athlete performance training. Kristen, you can go to the next slide. So health and fitness of our athletes, uh, as you just heard from Aaron and Kristen, is, is really important. And for us, it's become a priority. So we at Special Olympics are going to be focusing on this more than ever before moving forward. We are really in process of working to develop a organization-wide fitness strategy with a goal that our athletes will become healthier, more fit, and live longer lives. So athlete performance training is a piece of the strategy, but it's not the only piece. So you're gonna to continue to hear from Special Olympics over the next few months as to what exactly is involved in our fitness strategy. But again, tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about athlete performance training. Going to the next slide, improving the health and fitness of our athletes is really a part of our mission. And the work that we think, the work that we do is really important. But if you're an athlete yourself, you may know that there are certain times health disparities um, there, are, there, are, there are certain things that exist within the population of individuals with intellectual disabilities. As you can see on the screen, individuals with intellectual disabilities are actually two more times likely to be obese, two more times more likely to have cardiovascular disease or asthma, five times more likely to have diabetes, and unfortunately, as a result, die 20 years earlier than the general population. I hope you're sitting there this evening thinking these statistics are not okay because that is what we at Special Olympics think. This is not okay. But the good news is, is that we think we have the ability. We don't think, we know that we have the ability to change them. And as an organization, we are committed to doing so. So let me tell you a little bit more about athlete performance training going to the next slide. What you should see all here is really a snapshot of athlete performance training. Athlete performance training is gonna be implemented again at practice by coaches, but our athletes are gonna play a really important role when they're at home with their families or their caregivers. In order for our, our athletes to make progress, it is extremely important that our athletes are making this their new lifestyle. And again, it's not just a Special Olympics thing. It's a thing that we all do together. You commit to doing this. Because as you know, if you make this your new lifestyle, most of the work is actually gonna have to happen at home versus on the playing field. It's gonna be the job of our coaches though to give our athletes the tools and instruction and of course encouragement they need to be successful. 
So we're going to do athlete performance training in three steps. And I'm going to talk to you about those three steps this evening. The first is education. The second is exertion. And the third is evaluation. So going to the next slide, education. So our, 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 at our practices, and again, these are the, our sports practices, our coach is going to take time during each practice to discuss three things, physical activity, nutrition, and hydration. Again, they're going to discuss those things with the team. We're going to ultimately have a goal to exercise five days a week, eat five total fruits and vegetables per day. Now, again, that's a total. Um, and drink five water bottles per day. We want those water bottles to be 16 ounces. So they're the, the larger water bottles, not the small eight ounces. So those are gonna be our nutrition, our hydration and our physical activity goals. And we're gonna discuss them regularly at our practice with our coaches. There are going to be materials that athletes and coaches receive. The first material that the coach is going to receive is what we call a coach's education guide. The athlete guide is going to be very similar, but it's just, um, it's a little different. They're, they're, they're alike, but they're different. Um, what I would say is that they are, the, the coach's education guide really mirrors the athlete guide. However, we know not all of our coaches are health experts. So our coach's education guide is going to contain more information on the various topics. So again, we are gonna provide the resources for athletes and for coaches, that's education. Let's talk a little bit more about what this coach's education guide looks like on the next slide. For coaches that are opting into athlete performance training, we are gonna provide a training to them. It'll be available in our visas portal, AKA the online portal. Coaches that want to do uh, athlete performance training uh, are going to eventually, after the fall season, be required to watch the training um, to understand the materials and expectations. Training will be available within the online portal at the end of August, but for fall 2021, we are not going to prevent our coaches from getting their materials if they do not take the training or from being eligible in the coaches training and progression plan, which I'll mention a little bit more towards the end of the presentation. So we want our coaches to be trained. We want our coaches to be familiar with the resource. Again, it's gonna be implemented for a minimum of eight weeks during practice. We are suggesting that coaches take time out of practice, whether that's during the warm up or cool down. We think it'll work, it would work best during that time. And again, they're going to be discussing physical activity, nutrition, and hydration as a team during either the warm up or cool down. You can see what on the screen is a table of context, and really that's showing you the eight week program outline. Um, with this, the, the coaches are getting really a uh, coach's education guide that is a wonderful resource because it's going to, like I said, provide comprehensive understanding of the topics to be uh, to discuss as well as activities for instruction. We're going to quickly, and again, I'll be, qu I'll be quick, uh, show you the week by week athlete performance training guide, just so you have an understanding of what this will look like for you as an athlete or for you as a coach. In week one, really what's gonna happen is the coaches are going to distribute the athlete guide. They are going to be introduced to the goals of athlete performance training. So what, what will happen is again, the coaches education guide will allow the coaches to see one side of the guide while the athletes are able to follow along on the other side of the guide. Um, the hope is that this will allow our coaches to easily interact and discuss health topics with our athletes. So that's week one. We're gonna to go to the next slide and talk about weeks two and three, which are gonna focus on exercise. So we know that's one of our goals. Remember the goal is to exercise five days a week. So this section is gonna discuss really important topics such as exertion. Um, exertion being the effort that we push our bodies to um, when doing exercise. Different intensity levels. Um, endurance, types of exercises, endurance, strength, flexibility, and balance, why exercising can be fun or how it can be fun, and again, how to reach your performance, your athlete performance training goal, which is exercising five days a week. 
So coach is going to focus on that weeks two and three for weeks three, uh, uh, for weeks four, five, and six. Sorry, I had to do my math there. Going to the next slide, our coach is going to focus on food and nutrition. Uh, Haley, if you don't, or Kristen, if you don't mind going to the next slide. So again, we're going to focus on food and nutrition. Again, the goal is to eat five total, total being the right word there, fruits and vegetables per day. So this, this section is going to discuss what is healthy weight? What are healthy foods? How do you build a healthy plate? What are perfect proportions? What should my plate look like? What are healthy meals and healthy snacks? And again, how to reach our goal of eating five total fruits and vegetables per day. And then last but not least, we're gonna focus on hydration. Going to the next slide, week seven and eight are gonna focus on hydration. Again, we already said our goal is to drink five water bottles per day, 16 ounces a water bottle. So this uh, section is gonna discuss hydration. It's gonna talk about what your body will feel like when you're dehydrated, what are healthy beverage choices, and then how to reach your hydration goal. Before we move on, if you're an athlete or a coach, it is important to know that the guide, both the athletes and coaches guide will enforce moderation. Because if we have somebody that hates the taste of water, I think it would be unrealistic to expect them to drink five water bottles per day following week one. So what we talk about in the guide and you'll see throughout the guide is that we expect to see an increase of water intake throughout the eight weeks using that as an example. Again, we really want all everyone to remember that moderation is key. So uh, going to the next slide, we've now showed you what the coach's education guide looks like. But again, coaches aren't alone in this. Athletes have to uh, do athlete performance training, not only at practice, but also at home. So one of the responsibilities of the athletes is that they are going to get a daily exercise, nutrition, and hydration tracking. Athletes are to use the tracking sheet to really help them track their goals for one year. They are really to fill in the stars if they reach their athlete performance goal for the day. Um, it is important to know that we at Special Olympics don't need a copy of this at the completion of the season. This is yours to keep. So uh, moving on, we've now done education. The next step is going to be exertion. Going to the next slide. In athlete performance training, it is extremely important that our athletes are pushing themselves during practice and at training. We are going to be providing some wonderful resources for our coaches and our athletes about exertion and how to push ourselves so that we feel uncomfortable. We feel that burn. We know that ultimately we're making that difference, whether at home or at practice. The last piece in all of this is evaluation. Going to the next slide. To understand where we start with athlete performance training, we have to know, or I'm sorry, to know if we're successful, we have to know where we're starting and where we end. So we are going to track health and fitness metrics of our athletes. It's going to be completed twice throughout that eight-week season. It's going to be completed at once at the start, assuming that's your first practice, and then once at your last practice, assuming that's your eighth practice. We're going to collect height, weight, and blood pressure information. And based on your height and weight, we're going to get your body mass index. Again, your body mass, body mass index or BMI will be automatically calculated. So you don't need to know that. We'll do that for you. We're gonna educate all of our athletes on why this information is important and especially how to collect it because we understand people may not know how to collect it. Again, we expect our athletes to come to that first and last practice with this information. They're gonna be able to track it through their daily exercise, nutrition, and hydration tracking, which I showed you a few slides ago. So that's for health. And then for fitness, we're gonna measure aerobic fitness levels, which will be collected and automatically calculated from a modified version of the Cooper's test. Our sports camps participants actually just did the Cooper's test uh, today. So going to the next slide, and I'm almost done, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So again, if you have any questions, just drop them in through the, uh, the Q&A, and we'll address them at the end. 
um, for the Cooper's test. So to collect fitness metrics at the start and again, last training of the season, we're going to use what is called as the Cooper's test. It's been around for 50 plus years. It is very well known and widely used. Um, so we have modified this test though, to be administered during practice for our special Olympics athletes. Athletes are going to maintain a steady walk or run pace throughout six minutes while covering as much distance as possible. Again, the Cooper's test is really going to measure the athlete's aerobic fitness levels. The aerobic fitness measures really measure how fit a person is. There are five levels, very good, good, average, advancing, and developing. So again, you're going to score based on one of those five levels. Going to the next and last slide, just to tell you a little bit more about our goals. So my hope is that you're hearing this today and you're super excited, whether you're an athlete or a coach. Um, if you are an athlete, I would encourage you to reach out to your coach and tell them about this and encourage them to sign up. It is our goal that for this fall, we have at least one training site per local program doing athlete performance training. We have much bigger goals by the end of 2024, but for the fall, we'll start with at least one training site per local program. So athletes and coaches, you can help us reach this goal. At the end of the eight weeks, um, as, as long as our coaches have implemented athlete performance training and completing the tracking piece of this, they are going to be eligible for the bronze level, specifically the athlete uh, performance training component of the coaches training and progression plan. What I would tell you all today is that you can register to participate. And again, you being coaches, um, our coaches are the only ones that should be registering their teams to participate in athlete training, athlete performance training. You're going to do this via the site registration form. Um, it, it, it lives on our website. And again, if you're interested in finding more information, you can just go to our website hover over the more than sports tab and then click commit to fit. Um, once you click commit to fit, there is going to be a training option or an option called athlete performance. And there you can read more information as well encourages as well as encouraging your coaches to sign up. Um, that's all for me this evening. Thank you again so much, Aaron and Kristen and Haley for having me. Um, I, I, I would welcome any questions. So again, if you have any questions, please just drop them in the, the Q&A. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you for all that wonderful information. I'm sure we'll have some questions coming in at the end. A lot of great visuals, which I'm sure some people will love to see as well. Uh, and we can talk later about how the athletes on this call can get others motivated and start uh, doing some athlete performance training in, in their local program. Uh, I know this program will definitely help our athletes reach their peak performance, both on and off the courts. I can't wait to dive into athlete performance training and work on my improving my overall fitness. That's right, Aaron. Just like the workout warriors, we're going to be improving our fitness on a daily basis instead of just once a week. Now, athlete performance training won't be the only new thing that we're going to be diving into. The second season of our new talk show, SOPA Tonight, will be launching this fall. That's exciting news. If you haven't watched season one, you definitely want to binge it before season two comes out. To give you a taste of SOPA Tonight, we're going to play some of our favorite segments. Roll the clips. All right, everybody. Welcome back to SOPA tonight. Now it's time to play a game called... Wait. Cue game show music. All right. We're calling this game the closest to the pin. The object of the game is simple. I'm going to give these two, these two gentlemen number-based facts about Pittsburgh and also Philadelphia. And we're going to guess that number. Closest to the pin gets the point. And the first one to the three wins. And yes, this is a spoon, not a microphone. Okay, first up, everybody ready? Are you ready, Scott? I'm ready, Jack. Are you ready, Rich? 
Let's go, Jack. I'm ready. All right. First question. How many bridges are there in Pittsburgh? 300. 200. 200. The closest is actually Scott, which is 446. Next question. How many murals are there in the city of brotherly love? Even I don't know that answer. I'm I'm gonna say uh, ten thousand plus. Okay, uh, Scott. I'll say five thousand. Actually, Scott actually got it right. It's closest to two thousand. <laughs> ten thousand, really? What? That, he said he followed all the murals in Pittsburgh too. He has an unfair advantage. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you live in Philadelphia. How do graffiti, you... <laughs> graffiti doesn't count. <laughs> different. No. Different. Graffiti different. <laughs> oh my gosh! Goodness. All right. Roseland Palace in Pittsburgh's shady side neighborhood is the most last wooded street remaining in Pennsylvania. How many wooden blocks were there used in, when the road was constructed in 1914? Well, I've been on that road. It's, it's a small, small street. Uh, I will say... I'll say 10,000. Rich. I don't even know where to begin. I'm going to I'm going to go the reverse from the mural and I'm going 5,000. Actually, Scott is closest is actually to 20,600. <laughs> So Noah, the the inaugural indoor winter games were in your your uh, your your York two two years ago. What do you remember most from 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 that experience? We did a a a song with 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 me. It it was a lip sync song called "This Is Me" from the Greatest Showman. Nice. And what it is is. And saying that we we all the we we the outcasts need more to be gone out of the uh, sun lines or the shadows to say who we are. We have a, a, a voice. Hear us scream, and we are viable and we are worthy. All right, Noah. Let me know the, what what idea you have for 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 athletes to do to be to be the best representative in in, the, in their community. Can you tell me that? So I tell you, I think this should be representative in like in in different meaningful ways, like the like healthy athletes, the 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 fit five and the healthy athletes and up and down with the young athletes because they need a mentor that they can idolize and look up to. Well, another state games is here and it, it is a summer Wow, now those are some awesome interviews and segments. I can't wait to see what they do with season two. Joining us tonight to discuss his time on SOPA tonight is Terry Aprila from Team Lehigh in the Greater Lehigh Valley and Pocono region. Welcome, Terry. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Having me. Um, how y'all doing today? We're doing great. We love seeing that video clip of you. Yeah, it's been, it's been a fun time. So hopefully they'll let, let, let me be the host of the season two. So, so so who knows? I, I would love to. So, Well, you did great. You were a natural. Can you start, Tari, by introducing yourself to the group and telling us how long you've been an athlete and what sports you play? 
I really I originally start start um starting the special Olympics program when, when we used to use the little live in Michigan back back in two thousand and then um and then um and then we moved moved from Michigan to Pennsylvania back back in back in two thousands and um and in two thousand and two and then I continued to be able to play to play the special Olympics, special Olympics program in in Pennsylvania. Um since then I I I played for Special Olympics. I played basketball, soccer, softball, bowling, bocce ball, uh flag football, and um track and field, and um and also and also a fitness and fitness and fitness have tap on. So and uh yeah, it's just just um and also off the field I I did um athlete representative. And also, also I did, um, also I did uh, the global message, global messengers. Very cool, Tari. Do you remember how old you were when you first started in Special Olympics? Um, I used to, I used to, I used to start. Uh, I start um, uh, Special Olympics. And when, when I started Special Olympics in Michigan when I was when I was 13 years old, and 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 I and I and I, and I, and I used to be and I and I and I, when I was in seventh grade, you seventh grade. When we used to, used to live in Michigan, I, I was 13 to start the the, uh, the the Special Olympics. Very cool. And I heard you also mention in your in your very long list there of sports, sports history. You also mentioned the fitness heptathlon, just like Aaron. Yeah, it was it, it, it was fun. So it's, it's important for, for for us to uh, to to stay healthy and to stay stay active for for the athletes during during a difficult time during during the pan, pandemic and. Uh, and also, and also like to like to do uh, just 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 they like to do like 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 doing the do fitness training, the training by myself, um, like like three 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 times three three times a week, and then before 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 we before them before I'm doing doing a big test before for, for fitness I have to have, have to have a lawn and uh, and uh, the and get and and, and, and get, 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 get ready and and. Getting better, like every every single time, and and can get a great, 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 great progress. Tari, did you have a favorite event in the fitness heptathlon? A favorite exercise? Uh I like to um, I like the uh, like like the the the, the wall, the, like the uh, the the, the box agility. I was also like the sprint, like first of all, you got to got sprint, like it's really like like sprint, and then then that sprint, like you got first of you got sprint. You know, so you got it, got some of your feet, and then and then you and then you and then and then, and then run it back, and then and then it's just a sprint, sprint, it, and sprint it, sprint it to last. So, yeah, those are alternated. Um, I was with, with two cones. I I, I sprint it first, and then and then I then I then I then I, and then I um sh shoving it, shoving it, shoving it back, and then and then and then I and then I um run it back, and then and then I then I just sprint it, sprint it to the last. So. Yeah, they like the sprint, and also the like the um, um, a lot like the power punches. I also like to do uh, um, a lot like to do uh, like 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 push ups, and also like to do um, like power punches, and also like to do um, and also like to do um, yeah, I also like to do um, yeah, also I like, like to do a. Uh, Sounds like you like the whole list there, Tari. Yeah, I mean, like like to yeah, the, the whole list of the, the, the like to enjoy it. Plus, I like to do a plank. I like to do a plank. So oh, plank. It, takes, it takes about it takes about it takes about time to to have strength. It takes time to time to it takes time times with, with your strength. It takes the time with your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just never know what's going to happen. So 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 I, I I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't, I didn't so 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 good for me. But good for me. I. Then dropping it until it until 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 the last second. So also well, like to do, do fitness. So well, we will have to get you signed up for the athlete performance training because of all the stuff that you've been involved with. You and Aaron both are are very much into fitness and and staying healthy, right? Yeah, it's, it's important point for us to to stay healthy during during a difficult time. So also also so so um support for me me for me to everybody else to to stay active stay active stay staying fit. Before the, before the competition and in person finally resume. 
That's awesome. Now, we've heard a lot of what you've been doing, and we can see that you are a, a super involved athlete in Special Olympics. And now you're going to be adding TV host to your resume from, from your uh, stint on uh, SOPA Tonight. So tell us about that, Tari. Tell us about how you got involved with that. Well, I did, I did uh, the additions. Um, the one I, when I when I when I checked I'm checking on Facebook, um, they they they're, they're doing the special fix uh, the TV TV editions. And when I was checking on Facebook, and I'm like, I'm like, wow, this is this is the fir first time. Uh, this is this is the first time. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I would like to like to, to, to try to try it out to, to be to be the host. And also, what I did did uh, did some of the, did some addition. Also, also I did did, did 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 some dancing like 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 to just show show show, show my my personalities. And plus, I like 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 to do I like to imitate uh, some of the TV, TV TV personalities. So, and also, and for example, I like to like the the Special Olympics Pennsylvania are going to win and win a championship, guaranteed. That's my my, my Charles Barkley. That's not my Charles Barkley <laughs> impression. It's like, and I, and also I did like, man, this team is terrible. That's what the Charles Barkley said. So, I like the imitating. So, and. Um, and also, the like like to do uh, like like to like to show my personalities. Also, like like, like to do dance, like to imitate people. They like to um, yeah. And then also like to the send people like uh, like like show my personality, like show show my comedy, and, like to imitate people, like 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 some special uh, some some uh, celebrity and. Um, and um, they also like to do and and um, and, and and I got a call and 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 I, and I made, made it to the top five to, to be to be the host. So it was which, which is a great a great experience experience for me. That's awesome. I remember seeing your video come through, and you definitely had a lot of a lot of different things in that audition. So you you put a lot of effort into that. It sounds like a very intense process. Aaron, yeah. I think you have the next question for Tari. Yes. What was it like being a host with Sopa tonight? What was your favorite part of being a host? Yeah, I like 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 to like to, I like, to I like to be the host. I love to be the host. So I, I like like to do um, I like to like to do any inter, 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 interaction with with people. With the, I like to inter, interact with people. I like to, almost I love to do the the, the interview with the, with the, some of the, some of the great special guests. So especially 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 the great special guests with the, the, when I, when I was a host. So. And also, a lot I like to like to do uh, like educate with 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 educate the, all, all the people about the, about the Special Olympics, and um, and also to spread the words about the what's going on in it, what's going on in in our, in our Special Olympics program, like locally and, and also and also statewide, and also um, yeah, I like like to like to like to uh, educate with educate. I like to like to educate with audience. Like and and uh, and and and, prom and promote to promote the people about 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 uh, what 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 our special Olympics pension is all about and, and educate what the what what and educate about the special educate the special Olympics of what and educate the special Olympics of what 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 was about and um, educate and, and and promote people on what's going on in, in, in our program and also and also I like to like to do uh, interact with people I like to have fun doing an interview with. Uh, with, with with the great special guests and uh, especially the SOPA the SOPA I also like to interview with with SOPA spotlights and also like to do like like, like have fun with 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 the, with the trivia questions with, with with the great special guests and also right. I like like to do I like to do uh, I like I like everything to, uh, being being a TV host. <laughs> you, you like interacting with a lot of people and you're quite the entertainer, right? That's a natural, a natural talent for you. Now, yeah. Tari, I know you have been an avid watcher of Team Tuesdays. And now our final webinar, you are a part of. So tell us what has Team Tuesdays meant to you and why have you kept tuning in each month? Team Tuesdays is, is, means, means a lot to me. And also the like, like, the like, the like, the watch, like, it's 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 a great education for, for us. So it's uh also also uh also like 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 everything with the that I watch the, the team the team the, the team Tuesday. Also like I really enjoy watch watch the, the motivation speech that they, that we had like my to talk about the mind of our athletes and to talk to talk about the uh the, the healthy the healthy tips that they they are giving us and also like 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 to do like also uh, I really love the uh the 
the great the great feature that we had for 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 team for team Tuesday. So it's uh yeah it's uh and also a little, I really enjoyed uh uh Claiborne and uh, the letter of Claiborne that 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 you had a, a great speech that that we that we had and I also like to um yeah I also like to like do the uh, the women the women's month that that we had the interview I thought that interview the the former female the female the the former female of uh, the NBA re the referee that that, that had and, and and asked them to say what was the what was the best what was the best time or what, what was the tough time to to be to be a referee and she she started to start she she said that the first the the the, the worst time for her it is is uh is um is traveling the best the best the best the best time for for her is is the uh, is it really enjoyed working with 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 with, with with one of the best, with one of the best players in the world, and one of the best leagues in the world to look like the NBA. Mm -hmm. There is there are so many webinars; it's hard to pick just one, right? Yeah, the thing is, I really enjoyed, enjoyed everything. So it was it's really really tough to 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 choose choose one 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 of my favorites. So I really enjoyed it, which was, was a great education for us. And uh, it's the it's good for us to, for 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 team for team the team Tuesday to. To connect with, with us, to connect connect with us, like all the coaches, like all the all the all the athletes, and, and all all the volunteers, and, and everybody else, to to, to stay connected, like during a difficult time last year. That's right. That's very very true. It's very important. So, Aaron, I think you have one more question for Tari. Can you hit him with our final question? Of course. Can you tell everyone why they should tune into SOPA tonight? Yeah, this is also our first first time that we had the, the first the, the first time ever that we had, we had the talk show and I have our own talk show, and uh, and uh, yes, it's important for us to it's important for us to uh, to educate with all, all all the wider 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 audience to um, to do the what the what what they talk about what the special Olympics about and uh, and 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 promote and, and educate to the what what the special Olympics about. And especially the our programs about, and um, and, uh, and 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 sp spread and spread the word and spread the words about 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 the, what's going on in, in our in our in our special expensive program state wise and uh, look wise and and um, I really really enjoyed it so 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 uh, so, so hopefully hopefully I, hopefully I could I could be I could I could, I could be, be, be the host by season two so but who knows but 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 uh, but uh, I would love to so it's. Uh, it's uh, also like like to inter interact with people. It's, it's, it's great to speak for it's great to interact with people and, and connect with people with all, all with with all with all the athletes, coaches, and, and everybody else. So so it's, it's important, important for us was to stay stay connected with us and uh, uh, and uh, it's important for us to 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 promote and educate uh, the special Olympics or the uh, special Olympics or what, what was what was all about, especially in, in our program uh, state wise and, and, and local wise. That's right. That's right. Well, thanks so much, Tari. And to further convince everyone to watch and tune in, let's check out a teaser trailer for season two of SOPA Tonight. Season two, right, Tari? Yeah, I can't wait for season two. So, so yeah, like you can't wait for season two. I think this is going to be it's going to be bigger and better, better than ever for for season two. So, 
All right, well, we'll keep moving here. Um, I know some questions uh, did come in the Q&A box. Uh, Aaron, I'm gonna look through those really quick. I know somebody had asked something to Chelsea uh, about getting the slides for the athletes, uh, athlete performance training and also asking about registration, which I believe if you guys look at your Q&A box, um, you can actually see that Chelsea did answer that with a link of where the coaches can register. Um, and then Chelsea, if you are still on, can you tell us anything about the slides? Yeah, sure, Kristen. Um, I am happy to distribute the slides. Um, Aubrey, I would say since you're asking specifically, if you don't mind just dropping your email address in the chat and I can send them to you directly. Again, we are working on getting the training online, but for now I'm happy to send you the slides. So if you don't mind just sending me your email address and I'll send them to you directly. All right, awesome. Thank you, Chelsea. And then uh, Aaron, the only other one I see here for you is we talked earlier about you traveling uh, to World Games, going to Abu Dhabi. Do you have any favorite memories from your experience in Abu Dhabi that you wanna uh, share with everyone? Uh, sure. Um I had some favorite, my favorite memories were like getting to compete with people from around the world, um, meeting new people, meeting new friends. Um, what, what did that feel like to uh, be across the world and represent Team USA? It was scary at first, but then it felt awesome. I bet. I bet that felt awesome. And did you win any medals when you were over there? Yes, I came home with a gold and two silvers. That is awesome. Very cool, Aaron. Very cool. And Tari, I know you talked a lot about SOPA tonight and your experiences there. So the question we have for you is, what do you do if you get nervous when you have to do some public speaking or things like that? Uh, just to, uh, just uh... Just relax and, and, and to take, take my deep, deep breath and 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 when when, I, when I'm nervous, it's just 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 calm myself down and uh, and uh, and pray about it and uh, pray about it and just just uh, prepare myself for, for for being host. Tari, do you get nervous? Uh I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't really really get get nervous. It's, it's kind of a little like they're taking a test. Uh, I, 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 I was born and ready to be to be to be to be, to be a host, so. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we want to thank everyone for all the great questions coming in. We are going to wrap up the webinar. Uh, I want to thank Tari and Chelsea for joining us tonight. So let's wrap up this webinar, Aaron. This concludes our final Team Tuesdays webinar. Thank you to everyone for joining join this webinar, as well as the, the entire webinar series. It is very hard to believe, uh, very bittersweet that this series is ending, but we are so excited to see what is next as we showed tonight uh, on behalf of uh, the team here, uh, Haley and myself. We wanna thank all of you guys for tuning in throughout the series and, and being a part of this experience with us. I can say we've, we've laughed a lot, we've learned a lot, and, and we've definitely connected a lot. We've been together this whole time and it's been wonderful to be with all of you through this series. So we hope you enjoyed our presentation tonight and our very special guest speakers. Also, thank you to Aaron, my co mc for joining us tonight as well. We hope that you all tune in to SOPA tonight and that you stay healthy and stay safe.